understanding federal security boundaries is critical when we're trying to develop an environment that uh, can be run in the federal government, that we can receive an authority to operate, we can uh, receive FedRAMP or DICAP or FISMA or any one of these certifications. They all require us to kind of think about the way what we're going to do security. Illustrated here, you'll see that there are multiple boundaries, and we're going to talk today a little bit about boundaries in the application of security in the federal government. Here we have an infrastructure boundary, a network operating system boundary, and an application boundary. And all three of those working together can get you into your certification. So the first question should be, why do I need to be certified? Well, whether your data, whether you are a vendor or whether you are a customer, a, a federal customer, if your data or services are outside of your physical location, you're going to require some sort of uh, certification for uh, security. Uh, typically that runs under FISMA. We don't spend a lot of time in this video talking about FISMA. Please see the other videos to understand a little more about that. But uh, what we're talking here about is how do we scale in that environment properly. And so to get FISMA to host your data or, um, or be a vendor who provides hosting services, you're going to need to get these certifications. And um, if you're just going to keep your data on site, for example, uh, you're still going to want to set up some sort of a boundary infrastructure so that it becomes easy for you to scale your environment. So let's go ahead and stock, talk a little bit about this infrastructure boundary. So here in the infrastructure boundary, we have our core components. We have things like your network, your physical security, and your infrastructure. This is things, these are things like your servers, uh, network, things like that, as well as the physical security. Remember, the environment. Uh, dependent upon the security level, it may mean uh, guns, gates, and guards, or some derivative thereof. So this is the core infrastructure. In most environments, this infrastructure, phys physical security, and network most of your services, and when I refer to services, I'm really talking about things that are listed over here in the application boundary, like email or mobility or some sort of application, uh, security, file sharing, things like that. Most of those type of applications are going to build upon an infrastructure. So your infrastructure is going to represent approximately, you know, 80%, perhaps 85% of every single one of your solutions. And you can see that today, right? You have your virtualized environment, whatever that virtual engine is, Microsoft, VMware, KVM, whatever it is that you're using, and your, your servers reside inside of that virtual environment. So the virtual infrastructure, again, the network, the storage, the servers, the physical security, that's all the same for every application. So the first suggestion here is that you build an infrastructure boundary and get that through your certification process. And the NIST control sets and other security control sets outside of NIST 800-53 will assist you in doing that. The second thing that you want to look at is developing a network operating system boundary. So here we see an example of Windows and Linux. We can add anything there, certainly not eliminating the possibility of of doing SUSE or Ubuntu or whatever it is that you want to do. Um, here you develop an operating system boundary. So that means that when you're, um, you've got your infrastructure in place, now you want to be able to easily, without having to recertify all the time, change that operating system. And over the course of time, you may find that your environment or an environment that you're supporting wants to migrate perhaps from Windows to Linux or from Linux to Windows or to SUSE or what, whatever, it doesn't matter. You want to make sure that that's a separate boundary so that you don't have to recertify all the way down through the infrastructure. Remember, this is going to represent a percentage of your environment, right, maybe 5% of your environment. And then another 10% of your environment is this last boundary that we're suggesting here, which is called the application boundary. And within the application boundary, you're going to find things or services that your customers are going to want, like email, file sharing, mobility, COTS, right? 
uh, commercial off-the-shelf software or government off-the-shelf software and security type of services. These are applications that are going to layer on top of the operating system. So it's kind of a building block approach. You have your infrastructure, you have your operating system, which lays on top of the infrastructure, and then you have your applications or services that lay on top of the operating system. And so as we develop our security strategy, we want to develop these in individual boundaries so that our certification process is more streamlined and scalable. There'll be a point where you probably won't make a lot of changes, maybe horizontal changes, meaning that you're going to scale out uh, the solution, right? Increase servers, increase storage, increase networks, things like that. And there'll be a point where you'll settle in on what operating systems you're using, but this will probably be your most dynamic boundary here. Your applications will change. Although there'll be some consistencies, mobility, email, file sharing, security. Those will probably be very consistent. But then you're going to add kind of this dynamic environment here with your COTS and GOTS applications. So that's the basic on understanding federal security boundaries and how they apply to our environments. Apply.